less brutal uh, execution camps. We couldn't grasp that the numbers of Jews slaughtered had gone from 1 million to 3 million to 4 million. Almost every article we read said the count was still incomplete. The final number would probably reach 6 million. I couldn't begin to imagine 6 million of my people murdered. I lay in my bed. I asked myself what sense it was made. I didn't make any sense at all. My mind couldn't hold on to it. This is around, um, I don't know what page this is, sort of probably around page 190 or so in your book. Then he called me a few days later. And uh, they're really just completely crushed by this news. And uh, they discuss it. What, where was God, and so on and so forth. Six million of our people at the end of that chapter 11 have been slaughtered. It's inconceivable. So we cannot wait for God anymore to do something. The madman has destroyed our treasures, and uh, so on and so forth. He takes his uh, final examination, and then his father has a heart attack. Last page of that particular chapter 11. Reb Sanders calls him to his house, chapter 12. And he spends a month there, I guess, while his father's getting ready. When his father comes out of the hospital, he starts telling about the problem in Palestine. Here it is on page 185 in my book, chapter 12. Do you, know, uh, do you know what page is in your book? Uh, had my father been well at the time, I would have talked to him about what was going on, basically. 195. What is it? 195. 195. So you guys are 11 pages ahead of me. He was reading everything you could find the total destruction of European Jewry. Occasionally he spoke of the importance of Palestine as a Jewish homeland. Mostly he concerned about American Jewry and so on. Uh, and um, he talks about the whole mandate situation with the British. Mr. Eden got up in the House of Commons, gave the complete details of the Nazi plan. This was in 1942. Mr. Eden was a British Foreign Secretary. But no one had cared enough. And six million were slaughtered. They all closed their doors. It's true, the British had closed the gates of Palestine in 1937. The Americans wouldn't let anyone in either. They were afraid of being overrun by refugees, and they all were stuck there and basically annihilated. So uh, then Danny's father begins to rave against the leaders in Palestine. That's on the next page. Who are these people? Who are these people? Ben Gurion. They build the Jewish land for us. Only when the Messiah comes. So he starts going on, you know, we can't do this now. When the Messiah comes, that's when we will have the Holy Land. Never, never, not while I live. We should not now build this country. Where is the Messiah? Tell me. And so he's going ranting and raving down his father. So uh, things are getting bad between everybody here, you see. And now we get into uh, book thir chapter 13. I think we're almost uh, finished this book here, and then I'll be able to tell you about the exam here quick. Let me finish through here. I told you how this ends. Um, Rep. Sanders had stopped inserting deliberate errors into his Shabbat evening. Um, and finally, I think, um, you see here, I came back to my room and found my father standing in the doorway that led to his study. He had a bad cold and was wearing a woolen sweater. He'd already had a heart attack, but he's still all worked up about the situation. He'd become involved in Zionist activities. So this would be around 212 or so. He was always attending meetings where he spoke about the importance of Palestine as a Jewish national home, raised money for the Jewish national fund. He was always teaching adult studies courses in the history of political Zionism and so on and so forth. His pace was, he was always tired. His face was pale. This would be about 1946, 47. His father is consumed and then he starts talking in 
around 214. The time is not to take things easy, he said. You can see what's happening in Palestine. The Haganah, he speaks of, is the Jewish defense forces there. The Irgun are the underground. He speaks about the Haganah and the Irgun. They're the underground um, uh, quasi-terrorist groups. They're fighting the British. The British, to get them out of Palestine, because the British won't let any, even after the Holocaust, won't let any uh, people come in. Um, and so there's terrorist activities in 46, 47 here, and they're going to execute one of these Jewish terrorist guys called uh, Dove Bruner, sentenced to hang. Um, and so his father's following all these things. And so his father says to him, Reuben, you're no longer a child. Uh, his father's lecturing him. A span of life is nothing. A man lives that span, he's something. He can fill that tiny span with meaning. Do you understand what I'm saying? A man must fill his life with meaning. It's not automatically given. This is an interesting book, whether you agree with the position or not. It's an interesting book. He tells you a lot of information. Um, and his father goes on and tells him more about his lectures that he's giving and so on and so forth. So um, that's in chapter, uh, what chapter is it? Chapter 13. I mean, and also he starts coaching Danny in math, because Danny may be good at some things, but he's not good in math. Then there was a big rally in Madison Square Garden where the Knicks play basketball, if you're a basketball fan. And they were having a big rally. It was the last month of February. This is probably 1947 or something. And they're all arguing about it. People like Reb Sanders despise all effort aimed at the establishment of a Jewish state before the advent of the Messiah. And so on and so forth. And so they're all uh, going on uh, about these things and the debates at the UN and so on. And my father had gave this um, speech at the Madison Square Garden, and it was a wild success, he says. It made all the front pages of the paper, and what happens then? Danny's father reads about the speech and forbids Danny to ever speak to Reuben again. Um, so um, that's sort of... Uh, <coughs> the end of that chapter uh, 13. So he says, the rest of that semester